Hi, and welcome to a brief introduction to RhinoCam. This is uh, just a, a, a sort of a, a nuts and bolts approach to how the program works. Uh, you can look for other videos that I'll be posting on more specific examples of projects and what you need to consider in those. But to start off with, I'm going to open up Rhino and I'm opening up a file right now. When this pops up asking if you want to load the plugin, just click yes. And you'll know that RhinoCam has loaded because you'll see a menu at the top here that says RhinoCam. We want to open up our operations browser and uh, this is where the majority of the, of the functions are going to be found. You also want to make sure before you do anything else that you're in the correct units. So if I click on this icon or if I go to tools, options, I want to look under my units and make sure that it's set to inches because that's that's uh, the format that we're going to be using. So if it's not in inches, make sure you convert it before you proceed. So the way the, the, the program is laid out, it's more or less chronological with how you're going to do things. So we have a setup tab that gives us various different tools for setting up our job. Uh, we have the create tab which uh, gives us options for various different kinds of tool paths that we'll be running and then the simulate tab which uh, allows us to simulate the tool paths before we we post them for the machine at the very top here you'll also find a cutting tool browser and um, if you open that up it might open up on the side like this you can just sort of pull it out this is uh, a floating tab or toolbar and uh, you can dock it right underneath and just sort of minimize this so you can still see what's going on but you don't lose too much real estate that way. You'll notice that uh, there's a uh, an XYZ icon at the origin within Rhino. That's going to be our machine zero and that's what we're going to use to to register our our part in the physical world to this virtual design here. So this is kind of a crucial point in the program and I suggest that you move the part so that the bottom left corner is at the origin in Rhino. So I'm going to use the move tool and select the, the geometry, make sure my end snaps are on. So snap to the end and then just type 0 and that'll move that up like that. The next thing that uh, we're going to do is go to our stock which again is under setup. So stock and I'm going to just choose the, the simplest for now which is box stock and what it's going to do when you click OK is it's going to create a virtual box around the object. You can see it if you click down here stock visibility uh, you'll see that this is in fact a bounding box for the geometry in, in all three axes. And um, Rhino is going to use, or Rhino Cam is going to use that uh, to compare that with our actual Rhino model to, to sort of decide how much material it needs to remove and that sort of thing. So this is a crucial step. Once uh, we've done that, uh, and you can you can toggle that off. You don't have to look at it the whole time. Uh, once we've done that, we're going to go into Create, and um, actually before we do that we want to look at our tools. So before we can define a tool path we need to tell it what kind of tool we're going to use. And um, so to define a tool click on create edit tools. These are all various different kinds of tools we can use. We're just going to stick with a, uh, a ball mill and we want to make this uh, 0.25 inches in diameter. And then up at the very top, it's good practice to include that diameter in the name of the tool because once you start to accumulate tools here, you're not going to know what's what. So it's, it's a, it helps you keep track of things. So once that's been renamed, we're going to save as new tool and it appears there. And if I click OK, it'll also appear in my tool library down here. And if I need to redefine that, I can just double click on that and that pops up again. 
So we have various different options for toolpaths. We have a bunch of them right here. We're actually going to go into three axis machining and we're going to start with a horizontal roughing path. So if you start that, and I'm not even going, going to change anything at this point, I'm just going to generate and you'll see the progress bar that's showing you the, the progress. It's done and it appears right here. If you were to uh, expand this, these are all various different options. We can access them another way and I'll show you how to do that in a second. So it looks like nothing actually changed here, but we do actually have toolpaths generated and you can make those visible by clicking on the toolpath visibility icon. And you'll notice that this path, this horizontal roughing path, it's called horizontal because it's using horizontal layers to remove material. So it does this, um, typically you start by roughing things out. So uh, you would start with some sort of roughing operation and then you move into the finishing operations after that. So the roughing operation will leave a considerable amount of material behind and that will then get cleaned up with your finishing paths. So, okay, I want to, let's say I want to redefine this path now. Because if I look at this right now, and if I were to measure the distance between two of these lines here, this is more or less uh, 0.06 inches. My tool is 0.25 inches. So it's, it's pretty conservative. Um, another way to look at it would be this is the size of the tool that I'm using right now. And um, so the center of the tool is following these path lines. And so uh, it's, it's a fairly small step over that it's doing each time. We could be a lot more aggressive. The reason you would want to be more aggressive is to save time because all this adds up in the end. So I'm going to go back into horizontal roughing uh, just by double clicking and uh, I want to look at cut parameters to start off with. Cut parameters is for all the tool paths, cut parameters is sort of um, where the majority of your settings are going to be that you're going to be changing to start with. Uh, you may get into some of the other tabs at a later point. But this is our step over control and this is determining that distance right now. So if I were to set this to 100% for instance, the tool would literally just be stepping over by its full diameter each time. That's a little bit too aggressive. So I'm going to set this to 60%. The other thing I want to change is in this direction here. Uh, right now this is set to 50%. So 50% of the diameter of the tool. In other words, uh, an eighth of an inch is the, the step down distance and I can be a lot more aggressive with that. I'm going to set that to 100 and generate and you'll notice that the gap will widen between these lines and also between these lines. So I've, uh, I've reduced by quite a bit the amount of time it's going to take to machine this now. One way that, another way that we can look at the toolpaths is to take a look at um, display toolpath levels icon right here. When I click on that this allows me to cycle through each layer. I can use my arrow keys or just click on it. And uh, so that shows me what's happening at each layer. This will only work with horizontal methods where the paths are laid out like this, but uh, that can be quite useful. So once I have that, I want to simulate this now. I want to see what I actually have. So if I click on the Simulate tab, you'll notice that there's a, um, uh, well, I'm just going to start it, so I'm just going to say um, simulate, which is the play button, and it's simulating the the uh, the cutting. And uh, you have a few different options. Even while this is running, you can, uh, for instance, turn off the toolpath visibility right here, and that will typically speed things up quite a bit and make things a little bit easier to see. Another thing that you might want to play with. Uh, is the under the preferences right here. So if I click on that, this gives me a uh, display interval. So right now it's set to 100. 
I'm going to set that to 1. Click OK. And, and I'm actually going to just say simulate next. So this is already finished simulating. And so when I click next, you'll notice down here it says go to 1. If I click it again, it says go to 2, 3, 4, etc., etc. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm literally running through the program one line of code at a time. That might be too slow. In fact, it probably is. Even when I just run the Simulate tab, it might still be a little bit slow for what I want to see in general, if this is a very large toolpath, for instance. Um, so you can pause right here. And if I were to go back in here and set this to, let's say, 10, click OK. Uh, when you watch the go-tos now, it's no longer jumping one at a time. It's now jumping 10 at a time. And you can attenuate that to some degree by, by moving this slider to slow it down a little bit or bring it back up to its full speed that we've set. Uh, typically for larger paths, I usually set this to at least a thousand and that'll sort of just jump right through a bunch of lines all at once and you'll get to see the result that way much quicker. I think I'm going to uh, stop the tut tutorial at this point and I'll pick up at the next one. Thanks.